Breaking news, everyone. The AI has won. That's right. That's right. That's right. The AI has finally won. We now officially have a studio that has confirmed that it is basically, practically, replacing its employees with AI. Somewhat. Somewhat. The, the internet is a little bit up in arms about this because... Um, and I have a, a, a different theory about it, but do you remember when Netflix wanted to make video games or or basically they have a studio, there's a game studio, Netflix game studio, and they, they kind of put out things in the past. We've seen them at like, not E3, what we call it now, Summer Games Fest and maybe Game Awards, and they put out things saying there's Netflix game studios and they want to, Netflix want to get into the whole development of video games and things like that. Um, and all they seem to be doing with that is um, putting out mobile games or porting mobile games. They haven't actually released a fully fledged original IP yet, uh, despite this is the last couple of years that they created this division. Um, but nothing has actually come out yet. But don't worry, Netflix Games has an idea. Because yes, days after shutting their AAA studio, or a game studio that was working, not the whole Netflix Games division thing, it's just a studio that had about, I think it was around about 30 employees or something like that, uh, filled with former God of War and Overwatch talent that they hired a few years ago. Netflix announced that they're going to go in a new direction. They're going to have a new initiative powered by AI. We knew this would happen at one point. We just didn't know if a company or anyone would kind of come out and say, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're just going with AI now. We, we prefer it. It's cheaper. It's quicker. It's got all the buzzwords. As I said at the start of this video, they have never released an actual video game. And it, I still don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> I th so here's my theory. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give a little bit of a read into this, and I'll 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 tell you my theory behind this because um, there's an interesting person that they've hired. He has an interesting backstory actually that they've hired to to do all this to do the whole initiative powered by AI. And uh, if I scroll down here, that, uh, by the way, the Games Radar, thank you very much for the article. I like to shout out to the people who I read because I don't want to just steal content and make it my own. You know, like an AI would. So the guy they've hired uh, is a guy called Mike Verdu. Uh, he is the founder and previous vice president of Netflix Games, is now the new VP of Gen AI for games at Netflix. So he basically works at Netflix and he's been there since 2001. But then he's got moved into the AI part of netflix now which is still under netflix he just they've just moved him they moved his chair he's got a new desk he's got a new desk it's by the window it looks nice he's got a good view of of wherever they are california I would imagine somewhere on on the on the west coast he's got a new view is basically mike has a new view in his office and he put out a little bit of uh on his linkedin he put out a little bit of a, a statement um, and he said, at long last, I am ready. I am ready to talk about what we are doing next. I'm working on driving a once-in-a-generation inflection point for game development and player experiences using generative AI. This transformational technology will accelerate the velocity and development and unlock the truly novel game experiences that will surprise, delight, and inspire people. Mike is going in hard. Mike wants you to know that this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. All right? So I want no hate to Mike. Mike is putting his hard-earned time, and you'll feel bad in a moment when I tell you what, what he's done in the past to get to this position. He's worked fucking hard since the 80s to get himself in this position. I am a creator... I am focused, sorry, on a creator first vision for AI. He's putting the creators first, everyone. That's right. Mike wants you to know that he's putting creators for creators of video games first for AI. We're not we're not doing we're moving to AI, but we're we're making sure that we're making sure that the, the creators are important. That's why we fired a bunch of people. That's why 
This is important, all right? I want no hate towards Mike. Mike's a nice man. One that puts creative talent at the center. Do you see what I mean? He's making sure that creative talent is at the center of an AI-driven program or studio or whatever the hell you want to call it. With AI being the catalyst and accelerant. Humans are slow, all right? Humans are slow. We are just... We, we forget to do things. We're... We're just a problem at the end of the day. We're just sometimes we're a bit of a problem. Sometimes you call in sick and then things get delayed. You make mistakes. You know, you cost too much. We as humans just are, you know, we're the problem. And Mike's just putting this out for us. Mike's just pointing this out for us that we are the problem with video games. It's us. It's not. It's the, the the AI is only there just to give us the helping hand that we deserve, or we don't even deserve. The AI is there to help us because of our incompetence. AI will enable big teams to move much faster. It would also put an almost unimaginable collection of new capabilities in the hands of developers in smaller game teams. So yeah, uh, jokes aside, it basically means that like, well, we're cutting down on teams because we realize that we can make our assets and we can do writing assets. Basically, we can get an AI to write a story for us and we can get AI to make our assets and we can get AI to do to do other things, probably involving code, I would imagine, um, using what we are. <laughs> I, I think it would be a bit of a fucking piss take if, if the AI that they have or they're using used what was already being built, you know, by the team that just got laid off. And then that AI kind of like learned from that and kind of went, okay, here's where I can make a better idea. That would be, considering they haven't released really anything yet, that would be kind of a piss take, right? If that was the case, that they just got the team in to make some like, you know, make something original for us guys and then fire them and then use the AI to kind of use that as like a baseline, like a template to make something else or, or like to accelerate the process or uh, continue the process of it i don't know i'm not going there I, as i said mike is a great guy he's a great person this is all just you guys being negative uh, negative people about this whole entire thing right you know ai uh, gen ai is the next challenge i don't think i've been this excited about an opportunity in this industry since the 90s when i saw a new game launch every few months that redefined what is possible the 90s are coming back because of mike mike is mike is the catalyst and accelerant for us to go back to the 90s when everything was really, really nice. It was much more simpler times, though, Mike. You got to realize that, like, we didn't have, like, there was smaller teams, but they didn't have anything to fucking, like, accelerate things, Mike. Like, yeah, there was less people working in the game industry. Budgets were smaller because games weren't as popular. There was a real, like, core audience there. Like, but now games are fucking everywhere. They are very profit-driven. Um, and they're also in the hands of people who clearly uh, th that didn't have that desire and passion to make games that most studios had back in the 90s. Now it's more like, well, how many units can we sell rather than how is this game going to be good? So there is also that, Mike. I don't think this is back to the future, Mike. I don't like as I know you love the 90s, Mike, and I do, too. The 90s were a great time. They were. They were. We were getting... As he said, and it's true, we were getting games coming out every single every single couple of months that were just like, this is game changing, this is game changing. But we never got to really experience those kind of games. It was a truly, truly revolutionary time. But Mike is certain that generative AI is going to do that. It's going to provide that whole, oh my God, I've never seen that kind of game before. And he might be right. Joke aside, he might actually be right. You know, if we run, through, run something through an AI, we might get something that uses something to remake something that is inspired by other people's work to create something new and fresh and interesting possibly just like the 90s you know
It was an incredible time to be making games as Talon Creator showed us all what the future looked like. Guess what? We're back. We're back to the days of seemingly unlimited potential and the rapid pace of innovation, which resulted in mind-blowing surprises for players every few months. We are back. We are back. We are back. The 90s is officially back, everyone. Let's fucking celebrate. End of video. There we go. I couldn't be more thrilled to lead this new initiative. Pay no mind to the uninformed speculation in the media about the changes in Netflix games. What you've seen over the last several months was actually a planned transition. Right, okay, so now... <laughs> Let me finish. And yes, no, I'll come back. And yes, I'm completely delighted to be, <laughs> to be back, back out. On the frontier, trying to put a dent in the universe. All right, that's that's fucking heavy talk there from Mike. Right, so the the funny, the, I mean, it's funny, but now, now I believe this is true. Now I now I really do believe it's true. The fact that he said what you've seen over, pay no attention, just pay no attention to what's going on. But what you've seen over the last several months was actually a plan, plan transition. Now that actually reinvigorates that or, or like uh, kind of even puts that idea forward that they just hired a bunch of people to make like a template and and then they were always going to fire them anyway and bring in AI. I'm not, I shouldn't be laughing at this. It's bad. It's, it, this is a real fuck. This is bad. But um, th the fact that he said that, now I'm starting to think that that's true. I'm sorry to think that's true now. Oh, God. Oh, God. What are we doing? So also, let me tell you a little bit more about Mike. Mike himself, right? He's born in December 28, 1964. He's a bit of an old boy. He's, uh, he's in his uh, late 50s. He's been around, though. He's been around. He, his father, sorry, worked in the trade union, and his mother was a dance instructor. Uh, basically, a bunch of stuff happened. He was, like, studying, and he didn't finish his studies, uh, because advanced technology and IT service provider for the U.S. Department of Defense offered him a lucrative job as a programmer. He was in the fucking Department of Defense. This is why I said respect Mike. Respect Mike. He needs to be respected. Uh, age 20, he left the advanced technology in 1985 five, sorry, to find the software company at Paragon Systems that produced software for the Department of Defense. Mike is a fucking national hero. All right? That's why I said no laughing at Mike. I warned you early on. And you didn't listen, probably. But now look where we are. Paragon's programs were used to maintain submarines of the Idaho and Los Angeles class submarines. The company also rented out programming capabilities, or capacities, can't pronounce that word either. For example, to Bob Bates Video Game Startup Challenge Inc., which developed text adventures for the industry leader Infocom. In September of 1987, Verdu sold Paragon Systems, which had 25 employees at the time. Probably, Mike, did they, did they get their jobs? Did they keep their jobs, Mike? Was that part of it? Was that part of the plan, Mike? To IT service provider American Systems Corporation, where he worked as a business unit director for software development following the three years. So, basically... Mike, Mike's been around. He's been around doing the Cold War. You know, he's been around. <laughs> he's been, he's been in the Department of Events. He's a respected man. He's a respected man. He ended up going. The short story is he ended up going uh, to, to various different studios, or he ended up finding different studios, or being a publisher, or being essentially like a producer in most of these studios. And he ended up working on a bunch of video games, which I'm going to show you. Oh, he's been a producer since the 90s, essentially. Spellcasting 101, uh, which... What is this? Hang on. This is the first game he worked. Spellcasting 101, Sorcerers Get All the Girls. The 1990 adventure game. It was the first installment of the Spellcasting series. Okay, all three games in the series tell the story of young Ernie Eagle Beak Beck, a student at the prestigious Sorcerer University as he progresses through his studies, learning the arcanes of magic, taking part in student life and meeting beautiful women. All right, Mike, go back. Mike has been making important video games, guys. The games are important. 
that Mike has been making. He's been making very important games about going to college. It's basically Leisure Suit Larry, pretty much. But going to college and meeting beautiful women. That's Mike's start in his journey in video games, okay? So yeah, he ended up being like co-producer of Time Quest, all these all these games in the 90s. Mission Critical, I kind of remember he was an author. Um, the Wheel of Time. I remember The Wheel of Time too from 1990. Then he did Unreal Mission Pack 1, and then Unreal 2, The Awakening. Then Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle Earth 2. Then Command and Conquer 3, Tiberian Wars, a fucking amazing game. He worked for EA. He ended up being in EA. And then it stops. In 2007, Mike realized that the 90s were over and that everything was shit and it was boring. And then we ended up making boring games. Um, that's not to say that Mike didn't find any work because if you scroll back up, he worked, as I said, uh, from July 2002, 2009, he worked for EA Los Angeles. And then as soon as he was done with that, he went to Zynga, um, <laughs> which ends up making a bunch of mobile games that were drivel drivel the drivel mobile games but the, mike is respected respect mike so yeah mike then ends up making a bunch of mobile games of being like just just kind of like chief creative officer on, on on a bunch of mobile games and then he gets hired by netflix and here we are so my theory on this whole thing jokes aside is um mike is mike respected u.s De department of defense man he's been around during the cold war respect the man um i think this hire and this whole thing with generative ai is that netflix either there's two ways you can look at it right they've either seen that whole oh, hang on a minute triple a game making triple a games is actually more expensive than we thought maybe we can get rid of some people and that an ai can kind of do and then we we can cut costs that way and then release a triple a game that we've never released before maybe or or which i think is the most likely scenario given mike's recent um passion since well since the, well, he did say the 90s are coming back though my second my second theory is that this is just all mobile game stuff like it's generative ai but it's just gonna make me make a bunch of mobile games just spit out a mobile game every few months they're cheaper as a make. They're easier to produce. Mike has a history, which has been a creative director or producer of mobile games fairly recently after he fell in, uh, fell out of love with normal video games since 2007 um, because he realized the 90s were over. But he did say, he did say the 90s were coming back. So I don't know what to think. Mike, you've confused me.